Welcome to Full Frontal. I just stopped in New York between the conventions to tape our show and pick up some unsoiled pants. After a week of inspirational calls for trial by mob, capped off by a reasonable hour and 15 minute speech about imposing martial law. Let's do this. <laughs> After a long and bitter primary, Republican delegates gathered in Cleveland's wrong side of history arena. Some of them as enthusiastic as a dog going for a car ride, others as enthusiastic as a dog going for its final car ride. Let the other party go on and on with its constant dividing up of people. Have you read your own platform, Sparky? It literally calls for a wall dividing up of people. Plus, it takes a lot of balls to call your opponents divisive when your party is tearing itself in half because you nominated a sociopathic 70-year-old toddler. Oh, no, no, my graphics department shouldn't be dismembering elephants. That's Donald Trump Jr.'s job. <laughs> the rest of the family's job was to humanize the bigoted billionaire. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that insult is unfair and unproven. I meant, of course, the bigoted alleged billionaire. <laughs> my bad. Trump's children spoke on successive nights, a moving gesture by a father who clearly loves ranking his offspring in order of importance. A few years ago, someone very dear to me passed away, and the first call I got, as I knew I would, came from my father. That's so nice. I'm sure they'll get along great when they finally meet in person. <laughs> Despite their political differences with the Democratic nominee, members of Team Trump remained civil towards Secretary Clinton. You said she should be put in front of a firing squad. Do you regret that? Not at all. I spoke as a veteran. Oh, in that case, it's fine. See, as a veteran, he risked his life to defend our right to call for the deaths of our fellow Americans whose lives he's willing to die to protect. Thanks for your service. And of course, there was the rosy nostalgia for the past delivered by a freshly hatched Terminator from the future. I'm old enough to remember when terrorism was something that happened in foreign countries. You're not talking about Ireland, are you? You're talking about the brown countries, the ones that don't count. Look, if there was a theme to the convention other than perhaps the theme from Deliverance, it could best be summed up as Death, destruction, terrorism, and weakness. The catastrophic attack terrorists who are killing us. They are determined to kill us. War and destruction, every American should be terrified. An attack on all Americans. Extremist attack, homicide, murders, guns and bombs, chaos, stabbings, terrorism. morning in America, it's the middle of the night in America, and someone's kicking in your door. Oh, and also, Hillary took your guns away. We've lost the confidence in our leaders and the faith in our institutions. The Democrats have not led us to a crossroads. They have led us to a cliff. There's no next election. This is it. No next election? <laughs> You know what, that means nobody's gonna wake Rudy Giuliani from his crypt in four years to spit incoherently about 9-11 on TV. You know what, I guess every mushroom cloud does have a silver lining. <laughs> Look, we get it. Right now, the world is as scary and dangerous as Hillary Clinton is scary and dangerous and kind of a bitch. After the endless parade of fear fluffers did their job, America presented its upturned face to receive Big Donald's law and order load right in the eye. I will be your champion. The crime and violence that today afflicts our nation will soon, and I mean very soon, come to an end. Beginning on January 20th of 2017, safety will be restored. Oh my God, is Donald Trump running for Batman? <laughs> Actually, violent crime is the lowest it's been in decades. So where is Trump getting this fear-mongery shit? It is time for an honest look at the problem of order in the United States. We shall have order in the United States. Ha! <laughs> huh. 
And here I thought the only thing Trump and Nixon had in common were their loyal pets. <laughs> now I'm pissed that people are picking on Melania. At least she plagiarized someone good. <laughs> it takes a special kind of guy to look at how far our nation has come and say, you know what we need to get back to? 1968, that was a great year in American politics. Nixon was stoking fear of domestic unrest in white middle-class voters when Trump was still young enough to be one of his wives. As we look at America, we see cities enveloped in smoke and flame. We hear sirens in the night. We see Americans hating each other, fighting each other, killing each other at home. Millions of Americans cry out in anguish. Now come on, everybody, and let's do the tighten up. <laughs> Like Trump, Nixon, the candidate, courted old white middle Americans made anxious by civil unrest, a group Nixon would later come up with a snazzy nickname for. So tonight, to you, the great silent majority of my fellow Americans, I ask for your support. Trump rebranded Nixon's silent majority speech, and just like the buildings he rebrands, he made it way uglier. There's a silent majority out there. We're tired of being pushed around, kicked around, and acting and being led by stupid people. Oh, Donald, I can think of a lot of things to call your supporters, but silent isn't one of them. He <laughs> makes some good points. Don't worry, though, guys. President Trump will not be exactly like President Nixon. Nixon got 15% of the black vote. But here's something... <laughs> Here's something you missed if you weren't sitting in the audience for Trump's entire wannabe Nuremberg speech like I was. An arena full of bored people checking their phones and talking to each other. Now, as you know, I've been to every convention since 1968, and I swear the crowds were more excited for McCain in 08, and even for, what's his name, the guy your company brings in to fire you, Johnny Placebo. <laughs> so sorry, Donald, I know you were going for triumph of the will. Sadly, all you managed was triumph of the, well, but hey, buck up. You've never let utter failure stop you before. We'll be right back. Yeah.